Okay, we're going to now uh, talk about conditional probability. So the idea behind conditional probability is we start off with some kind of initial probability distribution, but then we might collect some, some new information that in some way changes what our assessment of the relative probabilities would be. So what's an example? Um, just a, an obvious example. We're going to see how we, how we're going to actually have a, you know, a formal approach to mathematical approach to, to accounting for disinformation. But if we go back to uh, rolling two dice, two six sided dice, and so we start out by thinking that by, by saying that the uh, probability of every combination uh, of every outcome, every pair is equally likely one over 36 probability. Uh, let's say that we were, were then told that one of the two dice is a three. So we started out thinking that the probability that the sum on the two dice is two, a one and a one, that's the only one way to do it, a one and a one. We started out thinking that was a one in 36 chance, but now we've been told that one of the two dice has a three. It's impossible with a three to get a sum of two. So our probability now is going to, we should revise our, our model accordingly. And instead of being one in 36, probably of two is gonna be zero given that information. So how does that, how does that information affect the probability of all the outcomes that's where we're talking about conditional probability. So we're recomputing probabilities on specific conditions. That's what that means. So let's let P be a probability measure. So I use probability measure. Could be could also use the term probability distribution. Um, it's the function that measures probability on the events. That's the that's the terminology. And then for any events A and B, then we're going to define the conditional probability of B given A. So this is the terminology we use is, and we'll explain, I'll explain exactly what that means in a second, but we write it as P of B vertical bar A. So that's P, we read that, that middle bar B given A. So probability of B given A, we define it this way. It's the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A, provided that A has a positive probability. And we can actually define this arbitrarily otherwise. So we could just define it to be zero if the probability of A is zero, but we could define it to be whatever we want if probability of A is zero. Um, why? Because in some sense, that's a degenerate uh, situation. So it would be like conditioning on information that prior to, uh, prior to observing uh, any information, uh, for example, Let's say we were we were considering in the dice example the probability that the sum of the two dice is equal to one. Well, we know that the minimum is actually two because the minimum on each die is one. So the minimum sum is two. One plus one is two. So then the probability of rolling a one when you're rolling two dice is zero. It's impossible. Can't happen. So then you could ask, well, what's the probability? 
let's suppose that we what's the probability that one of the one of the two da, dice is a three given that we rolled a one as the sum of the two dice well it's kind of a nonsensical statement because we're conditioning on something that was impossible at least impossible as far as we were concerned prior to doing it so you could call that conditional probability whatever you want because it, it indicate when you're conditioning on an event of probability zero, you're kind of you're you're kind of thinking about well, what if something that I previously thought was impossible actually happens? It either it it, it, it indicates there's a problem with your model altogether because if something that you thought was impossible actually happens, then you need to reassess the whole model. Okay, so. Anyway, that's not really a case that we'll deal with very much because we're going to be assuming we have models that make sense and that when we observe events and condition on information that it also makes sense. Okay. Let's see how these rules play out um, in the case of equally likely outcomes. Not how the rules play out, how the definition plays out in the case where we assume equally likely outcomes. So let's assume that omega is finite and P is the uniform distribution on omega. So then we already know that in this case, what do we know? We know that that means probability of A is just the relative sizes of A to the sample space for each A. Okay, very good. So then if we suppose that A is not empty, because if it's empty, it's gonna have probability zero, everything else that's a subset, any any subset of with an element in it is gonna have um, positive probability. Uh, then what is the probability of B given A? Well, according to this definition up here, oops, according to this definition up here, it's probability of A and B, the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of A. Okay, what's probability of A and B? Well, by definition, definition given here, it's size of the intersection divided by the size of A and then, I'm sorry, divided by the size of omega. And then what's the probability of A? Well, by definition, it's the size of A divided by the size of omega. So the omegas are gonna cancel out so the, and, and, we, and we're left with size of A intersect B divided by the size of A, okay? So, What are some, some observations here is first, what's the probability of A given A? So what's the probability that A happens given that we know that A happened? Well, it should happen then, it should be 100%. Well, how does that play here? Well, if, if A, if, if in this formula, we have A intersect B on the top and A on the bottom. What's A intersect A? A intersect A is just A, right? So this is one. So that's what it should be, right? If we condition on knowing that something happens, then what's the probability that that thing happened? It's one, it happens 100% of the time. And then for all omega, for every sample point, omega in A, what's the probability that 
that sample point happened is one over the size of A. Okay, so what does that tell us then? Is that for purposes of computing, conditional probabilities given A, so um, what does this mean? P of dot given A, that dot is like a placeholder. It's saying you can put any event in there that you want. So we're thinking of this as a function of the events, but we're fixing A. So for computing any probability condition on A, we can take, we can treat the sample space to be A. We can treat it as if it's A. What do I mean by that? So think about it this way. We start out, we have a sample space of all possible outcomes. One of those possible outcomes is A. And then we're asking, okay, what's the probability of, let's say, B given A? Once we condition on an event happening, we'll call this B. So what's happening here? B, uh, well, prior to any prior to any conditioning, you know, we have omega set of all possible outcomes. Well, then once we condition, once we say, well, let's condition on A, we reduce we narrow the scope of the possible outcomes down to the points in A, right? We're saying A happened means that the only things, the only outcomes that are now possible, given that information, are outcomes that were already prior in A, right? These outcomes. Anything outside of A, we're saying didn't happen, can't happen. So we're now saying, well, this, once we have that information, what is that there's a new set of possible outcomes, right? The sample space in some sense can be thought of as having changed or updating based on that information. And then what's the probability of B, give, of B happening given that information? Well, the only way B can happen now is if one of the elements in B that was in A so one of these elements happens. Something out here that's also that's in B can't happen because we know that we're confined to the events in A, okay? So it's an interpretation to say, once we condition on information, we've kind of narrowed the scope of the possible outcomes. And once we think of it that way then is that if, if we suppose probability of A is positive, then this function, this conditional probability function induces, this induces a new probability measure And what that probability measure is, is on subsets of A. So in other words, what I'm saying is we have, so if we start with we start with P on omega, and then we define a new function, Q, uh, let me be more, more precise. P is defined on subsets of omega. And then what we say is, well, let's actually define a new function. So I'm not, it's not guaranteed to be a probability. I'm defining a new function, Q, on subsets of A, 
And the way that I'm defining it is Q of B is equal to, and suppose that P of A is bigger than zero. Okay. And I'm going to define Q of B is equal to P, P of A intersect B divided by P of A. For subset B of A. Okay. Then Q is a probability function or probability distribution or probability measure. All of those are kind of used interchangeably here, all those term, terms. But Q is a probability measure. on A now, so the sample space is A. So you'd have to prove that, that's an exercise. How do you prove that? So just to be, to give you a little hint, in case you're new to this or new, uh, not as familiar with, with proofs. Well, we have to go back to previous lecture where we define the probability axioms and we have to validate, there's three probability axioms, right? One is that the probability of the sample space is one. So the sample space in this case is defined as A. So you have to show that Q of A is one, right? You have to show that Q of B is not is is non-negative for every B, and you have to show that um, countable additivity holds. Okay, that's actually the the hardest of the three. It's not. I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it but that's the one that's the most uh, involved, okay? So that's our introduction to conditional probability. And you might wanna ask, well, how do, we, how do we interpret conditional probability? One interpretation is to just say that we're narrowing the sample space. Um, we'll talk next about a couple of different interpretations of uh, conditional probability.